So NBA free agency is in full swing right now. Today, as of this recording, it's 3.30. It's July the 2nd. Yesterday was Canada's birthday. So happy birthday to Canada. Happy Canada Day. Yeah. Happy Canada Day. Watch some sweet fireworks downtown by the beach. Now, uh, speaking of beaches, a lot of and NBA players in LA, including Kawhi Leonard, who's fielding some different um, pitches here from the Clippers and the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to be hearing them out today. Uh, not sure who's first or who's second, but that's going to be interesting. Uh, that's going to change the balance of power um, in terms of who's going to have the best chance to win, no matter where he goes. But with that being said, a lot has changed. There's a lot of musical chairs that have been going around. Um, the most notable of which is the clean sweep that the Nets made. They signed DeAndre Jordan, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant. Oh, yeah. So they got a big three right there to I join their about young core. DeAndre Jordan. And he's getting 10 mil a year for four years. So these guys are going to be st- uh, sticking around with each other for a, for a while. I like um, it. I like be, that's the big, thrill. That's fun. It's not OP. It's just fun. Yeah. Um, and I, what I love about OP is overpowered, if you're not sure. Um, and what I love is that we have that new balance of new blood. And you know what? Katie's out for a year. And when he comes back, it's going to be really, really interesting. But while yes. that next year is open, the East is still wide open. Um, <clears throat> now, Durant is on the Nets now, and they actually did a sign and trade. So D'Angelo Russell, their best young guy, is going over to the Warriors. The Warriors. Now. Uh, that Which back, I, was, I was shocked about. That, that. What the hell? has no defense. It's like two turnstiles yeah. at the TTC when yeah. there's no when there's no conductor behind. You the already line. have. Uh, you just walk right through them. Yeah, you already have uh, Steph and um, um, and Clay. Steph, Clay, Clay, and can now play you small have D'Angelo. Is it Steph little, can play small it's, forward? It's, I mean, it's not Steph. I, sorry, Clay can play. Clay, small yes, forward. but still, you though. Know, it's like, just for know. me. I, I don't understand getting two guys who can't defend. I can just. I think on defense, they'll be very three. weak like that. They're going to bomb away from three, yeah. but when they're not hitting their threes, it's going to be such a bad defensive right? pairing. Also, the inside. How are they going to get on the inside? It's going to get harder this to get gonna on the inside. It's going to be really, inside. really, really scary. That's yeah. two guards that you're giving it up to, you know? Yeah. So if you get two guards like, say, Alonzo Ball and Drew Holiday from mm-hmm. New Orleans now, or you get two guards like, say, Oladipo and Brogdon on Indiana Pacers now, <clears throat> like these are two elite guards both of them can guard at an elite level like that's difficult to deal with when both guys are getting guarded up like that and then you're getting fed to the other way too like that's not you're getting fed up on defense you're getting fed up on offense it's not great so yeah for me i don't know i think it's the end of their dynasty in terms of championship yes. favorites every year coming in last five years championship finals runs hold that you, you know? get a few big i'm man. sorry dub big, nation need, but yeah you need someone, uh, some big guys over there. You can't just rely on all the small guys shooting threes all the time, in my mind. Yeah, for sure. And then, so obviously, uh, some other big names have been moving around. Mm-hmm. Um, also, for from the Warriors, let's not forget that Andre Iguodala was traded. Oh yeah, where did he go? To Memphis uh, Grizzlies. But what? then the but Memphis Grizzlies are going to buy him out. He's working on a buyout, okay. so they just buy his buy his contract out. And let him walk as a free agent. Then he wants uh, to sign with the Lakers. Uh, sneaky, so, sneaky. So this is what's go- this is what's going <laughs> okay. on. And on his way out, he said, "Last, he's like, not this season, but last playoffs. I had a fracture in my leg, and every day they were asking me how you feeling. Can oh, you play? I saw those comments, then, man. Yeah. So he's like, so he was done, and defi- he's gone. Yo, think about that. KD, Iguodala, all like kind of came forward. Maybe not." Well, Iguodala more vocally than KD. KD more through his actions of leaving the Warriors. But they've shown how um, there was a bad relationship going on with the, with the management in the Warriors. There was something going on where they felt pressured. KD didn't feel at home, perhaps, is what I'm hearing. The way he probably wanted or envisioned it to be. Mm-hmm. He always was kind of separated from the team. And his contribution wasn't appreciated enough. Even though everybody was like, yeah, KD is our best player and all that stuff. I think he wasn't looking for that exact chemistry, that exact um, atmosphere or environment. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It's just so important to have the right culture in your your locker room, you know? 
Uh, that changes everything. And th- the same goes for the Charlotte Hornets, who lost Kemba Walker. Right. I'm going to Kemba Celtics. Walker is going over to the Celtics now, mm-hmm. and they're seamlessly replacing Kyrie Irving. In my mind, I think you're getting the same amount of impact, if not more, from Kemba Walker because okay. he's not going to piss these kids off. Oh, and be okay. like, get out of the area. Like, these kids need to learn how a championship works or blah, blah, blah. Like, As opposed to Kyrie was a little more arrogant. Kyrie probably. says that, and I'm not into that. And like, yeah. I think these kids wouldn't be into it. But Kemba Walker is a hard-nosed vet, no nonsense, but he's not going to be in your face talking grease, in the media talking grease, promising your fans, I'll, I'll, have, I'll be back if you'll have me. Like, yeah. what's this all about, you know? And to have a bad season, then he's gone. But the thing is, I don't blame him for any of this because Kyrie never got to choose in his life to yeah. where he wanted to play. He never chose Boston. Okay. He got th- he got traded there. Right. He never chose Cleveland. He got drafted there. Mm-hmm. This is his first time to have autonomy and go wherever he wants. So I don't blame him for dipping. It's just what happened when he wasn't happy. It's not great. And that can be a little bit off-putting sometimes. Kemba Walker puts his head down. It's unfortunate because his nickname is Cardiac Kemba because he's right. just ice cold. He won U- he helped UConn when they won their uh, championship. Uh, and uh, So that that was huge, right? And I'm sitting here, and I'm just looking, and I'm like, man, you know, this guy is one of the best basketball players in terms of big games. He just never gets to play any big games. Mm-hmm. And Charlotte didn't give him the super max, so he <laughs> walked. And then, Fair enough. So Clay Thompson's obviously going to be staying with the Warriors. Yeah. One of the interesting ones, though, is Jimmy Butler. He's going to, uh, to Philly. No, I, I he was going from Philly to Miami. Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what's funny? He What he wrote down, you can find a picture of this, is he wrote down on his yearbook, it's like, one thing you'll never see me wear. And he was like a Miami oh, jersey. Oh, wow. And now he's I don't know. I didn't. Uh, I, when I saw the news, I was a little shocked. That was probably the last team I expected him to go on. I expected him to perhaps either go in um, on the Lakers or uh, I don't know where else were they like kind of. Anyways, I, I wasn't expecting the heat. Mm-hmm. I was not. It was a sign and trade. So then uh, Philadelphia got Josh Richardson in, re- in return. Okay. And so Philadelphia started, and they also signed Al Horford, who left Boston. I saw that. So yeah. now the starting lineup is Ben Simmons, Josh Richardson's great 3 and mm-hmm. D. You got Tobias Harris, who signed with them for the max, Al Horford, and then they got Joel Embiid. Great starting five, but they lost J.J. Redick. They lost Jimmy yeah. Butler. They, they replaced them with two players. Right. So they, it's just mix and match. But they had no depth before, and now they still have no depth. They still lost against us. They took us seven games. It was crazy. Yeah. But this would be very interesting to see what happens uh, moving forward. Now, DeMarcus Cousins, apparently there's no market for him. Nobody's even really <laughs> jumping at it to offer him uh, money and stuff. Crazy. It's kind of, yeah, it, it really does um, suck that he, Did you see Stephen A just fucking go off on the fucking Knicks? And, oh, uh, my God. The Knicks completely struck and, out. And uh, they, they brought up, like, I think... Uh, the Knicks brought up um, Cousins at yeah, one like, yeah, point. Yeah, we could get Cousins. And he's like, <laughs> boogie. And he just like lost it. Yeah. Hilarious. Which I get. I mean, I get if you're a Knicks fan. Must be tough. <laughs> and like, that's just so, it's like what sucks is that, um, you know, he dealt with the Achilles. And this eight, and then the ACL. Mm-hmm. And it's like his hip. And it's like, man, your body is breaking down, and that's scary for a lot of teams to try to invest in, you know? Yeah, man. It's Think about all the money they're putting in into that guy. And if he's, like, just on the bench, the whole the fucking, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I don't know. And then what's interesting, you know, now you got Dallas down there. They've obviously re-signed Chris Stops, so that's officially their thing. Mm-hmm. Chris Porzingis, and Luka Doncic. Right. Um, and then you got... You know, D'Angelo Russell over here going to the Warriors, like we said. And then Nikola Vucevic re-signed with Orlando. These are some some of the moves. Like Chris Middleton, again, stayed with Milwaukee. Al Horford made that move. Julius Randle went to the Knicks. Mm-hmm. Now, this is what the Knicks had to, you know, kind of settle with. Knicks have signed Taj Gibson and um, Julius Randle and Bobby Portis and Alfred Payton. Mm-hmm. And Reggie Bullock. And it's like these guys are just guys, you know? And they drafted RJ Barrett. RJ so Barrett. So they yeah. have. So is so RJ. They have, they have is RJ Barrett supposed guys. to be the freaking leader now? Like on a team of like. I'm not really particularly I don't know. sure who the leader on that team exactly. is. Exactly. I don't know where the veteran I presence is really issue. coming from. Um, not really sure what's going on there. Um, Marcus Gasol resigned with us. 
Yeah, Mar- Marcus all re-signed with us, which is great. And Brooke Lopez also went back to Milwaukee. And Wesley Matthews was also thinking about going to Milwaukee. I believe it was him. That's It's insane the amount of guys that are thinking about going to Milwaukee and trying to help them out. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Terry Rozier is actually on the Charlotte Hornets now. Okay. So he's their guard. Um, he left Boston. Uh, JJ Redick is on the Pelicans, Pelicans with Zion. Which is such a score for the Pelicans and again, Derek bro. And Derek Favors. They have oh so many God. guys now. Like, yeah. That's going to be such a fun team yes, to watch. Yes, I'm going to watch them. And then uh, Derek Rose signed a two-year deal with the Detroit I like Pistons. That. I fucking like that I'm a lot. That he got paid a I don't know if bit, I'm wrong, you know? but like, I like that trade a lot. Like, I mean, Derek Rose definitely looked like he was turning a bit of a corner in terms of that. So I think... To anybody looking for like a sixth man or some point guard depth, it's not yeah. a bad idea to have him mm-hmm. there. Uh, DeAndre Jordan obviously yep. went to the Nets. That's an, that's a great fit, honestly. He's that's a, he's one of the most. Uh, he's gonna have that Chris Bosh role in terms of everything. Where you're sitting there being like, this guy's completely underappreciated right now. Yeah, you gotta have those. those now dudes. Boyan Bogdanovich is on the Utah Utah Jazz as well. So, as you can see, there's been a lot of moves, but one mm-hmm. of the biggest ones, and Ricky Rubio surprisingly signed with the Phoenix Suns for quite a bit of money, mm-hmm. um, and JV stayed with uh, Milwaukee, and then Thaddeus Young went to, Chica- uh, went to Chicago. Those are the top mm-hmm. 25 free there agents right there uh, and where they went. Um, now, obviously, the biggest domino that is yet to fall, and the only domino that hasn't fallen that, I ha- that we've mentioned thus far is Kawhi Leonard. Of course. <laughs> now, obviously, you've got three candidates, the Clippers... The Lakers and, and Raptors. the Raptors. So if you're looking at LA, LA, and then Toronto, where does he stay? If I'm him, the easier path is in the East. We can just run it back. Mm-hmm. If you come back to the team, we're the best team in the NBA, and we're the ones to beat. If you go to the Clippers, they, didn't, they had two max spots. They didn't get anybody else. Now it's just you. You know... If it's just you going to Clippers versus just you coming to Toronto, better chance to win in Toronto. I think so as well. And then if you look at the Lakers, sure, you could join LeBron and AD, but who are you playing with? Like, Because you have no money left. That's exactly Your the point I was Your salary cap is completely yeah. shot. You need other players as well. Like, you need other what guys. What if one of them gets injured? You know what I'm saying? What if any of those three, let's say Kawhi goes there, one of them gets injured. Now there's no load management. Oh yeah. You can't oh take hell any ga- yeah. That's you, a very dude, good point. Yo, listen. Yeah. He took 22 games yeah. off in a Raptors uniform this year. How is he gonna do that? Oh, you can do that in the Lakers. You can take 30 games off if you want. Now what? Hold on. To the best of my knowledge, doesn't LeBron rest? To the best of my knowledge, doesn't AD get injured? Yeah. Oh wait, what's that gonna do? Put pressure on you as Kawhi to have to play when you're also a guy who has lingering nagging issues. Or you could stay here, chill, kick back. Sit for 30 games if you want. And considering how strong our team is without you, and considering how how weak the rest of the Bro, conference is, we no can doubt. easily get a second seed again, a first seed even, depending on how many games he feels like playing. Yeah. We don't we've proven that we can win on the road against Milwaukee. Yeah. We've proven we can beat the Warriors in their place before they close the barn doors on that place. We beat them three times on their floor. Four times that entire season, yeah. Because we also went to their went to their yard in the regular season and whooped them there too. So we 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 dismantled them. We helped them. Out. This is where you could stay. Mm-hmm. This medical staff has not betrayed you or told you that you're not injured when you are. Completely aren't. agree with you. you know, when you are, I should say that's just ridiculous. This is the best situation for him. Oh, the everything Basketball like like you said, and health and everything, and and the teammates and the depth of the squad, the situation he's in, the money he's gonna get. The actual longevity that I think he might have here is unmatched anywhere else. Also because of, first of all, the team that we have currently, everybody's like almost everybody's under 27. The few guys that are coming out of contracts are what, Lowry and uh, freaking uh, Ibaka like next year or something like that. If that if that frees up cap space or whoever's like gone from the old players, you know, you can always bring new players that are good. I mean, dude, is Masai staying with us? Like... I Just wouldn't. Run it back, baby. The girl. only thing I can see him doing it for is, yeah, he wants to go back to LA because he's from Family. there and all that stuff. Only kind of logical reason I see. And but the situation what? is gonna be in in LA. I don't think he's that dumb to go into. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tire fire. See, the the thing is, the coach is great for the Clippers. The the GM is great for the Clippers. The owner is great and has deep pockets for the Clippers. 
So in the front office, they're all check. But in terms of on the court, what do you got? Yeah. Now, the Lakers got the opposite problem. Whereas in Toronto, we run like a business. Mm -hmm. We are run like a business. That's what makes Toronto different from other organizations. Is MLSE owns us. We're not sitting there being like, Genie Bus owns the Lakers. Or Steve Ballmer owns the uh, owns the Clippers. Yeah. Or you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and and it 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 changes the way that you're structured because when you're structured like a business, your coach coaches, your GM yeah. is just your GM. Your president yeah. of basketball operations does exactly that. Everyone's clear cut delineation because it's business style. Yeah. It's like here's your role, here's your responsibilities and duties. Get them done for me and go above and beyond. And also and they were it. making the argument of like, oh, LA has all the marketing power and buying power. Like if he goes there, he might make more money off of those things. But I also uh, disagree with that because we have a, there's a whole country behind him if he stays here. Canada. That he's going to be the king of for eternity yeah. if he stays here and wins like another championship or something. Even w- fucking if he wins another champ, if he stays with us for another like five years and wins another one or two championships, bro, forget it. He's going to be the king of you Toronto, the king country. of Canada forever. He's going to be, country. they're going to make churches around him and stuff. It's so different. Like, it's come on, bro. Different you can, level. whatever he goes, LA, Lakers, yeah, Lakers, big name, marking power, all that shit, many titles, but he would never, even if he goes there and wins, he would never achieve what he would achieve here. In LA, you are you can be a star. He is a star. Yeah, there's, they've but been in hundreds LA, of stars there. But in LA, you're one of many. Exactly. In LA, you're just, you're just another guy. You're one of many. And dude, you're playing, you want to talk about legacy? You're playing behind LeBron and AD. People are going to be, the first thing they're going to be saying is like, Who's going to even get Kate, the MVP? Was Kawhi overrated? <laughs> and yeah. you're going to be hearing all this narrative like, was Kawhi yeah. overrated? And yeah. and how much did they need this? And what does it tell you oh, about we should Kawhi? Have t- gotten some, like, sec- uh, some bench players instead of Kawhi or this and that. Yeah, and It's just not a good look, yeah. man. And like I think just staying where we are here, it's a smart, responsible idea in terms of winning basketball. He said he had the most fun he's ever had playing here. I mean, the relationship Masai has with him, he brought him in into the room the first day and was Kawhi said why'd you why, why'd you bring me here why'd you trade for me and then Masai just told them straight up you're the best player in the league mm-hmm. and we want and we won a championship at the end of the day so I don't know if he goes to LA he's not even the best player on the team what's the point no, I'm not like, saying he's not the best player on the team but I'm saying he's gonna get Chris Bosh like in terms of exactly. narrative as well yeah. like, oh, everyone's like oh Chris Bosh Chris Bosh right. like Chris Bosh one of the best guy, like power forwards out here yeah. and, and and we don't we don't look at it the same way because it's like you go and you play with LeBron and D-Wade and now you're the third fiddle out Kevin Love you're the third fiddle out Kawhi you're the third fiddle out yeah. I don't. Yeah. That's not worth nah. it, man. Not for Kawhi, man. That would be a suicide mission if he does that. Dude, it's not good for your brand. And I'm not. Be... I'm not even doing it that because I'm from Toronto and like whatever. Home I is where see. your heart is, in my mind. Yeah. You can change your heart in a year after you've been somewhere. You can exactly. fall in love with a city. Toronto's a damn charming city. Yeah, man. I think so. I think a lot of people don't realize that that the charm here, the advantages of living here, and so on. And I don't know, man. Let's hope he stays. Oh, a good argument I was going to make. He can always, like, they're saying, oh, he's from LA. He wants to go back home and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. Play with us another few years and go back home. Nobody's like, you know That's what I'm saying? It. You can play with us for two more years. And you years have two he homes. Can't, you can, he can't get the veteran maximum. You to, like, so if you play 10 years in the league, yeah. you can get 35% of the cap. Right. Right now, he can't do that. Yeah, so he has yeah, to yeah. play two more years. If I'm him, I play two more years in Toronto. And I heard a couple American outlets being like, that's risky. Have you seen how we dealt with him medically? Have you seen how we dealt with him, period? Like, dude, this guy's good. He has trust in our in our medical staff. You think yeah. you can't survive two years? And on top of it, Kevin Durant just got a ma- super max extension coming off of an Achilles tear, yeah. which is the worst injury you could have in terms of basketball. So if he can get at the age of 31 a, f- a five year of super max with a torn Achilles that he just ruptured, yeah. What do you, what's what's Kawhi Leonard gonna get with it with this type of a resume at his age at 27? If you look at LeBron James, how many? Finals MVPs did he have? LeBron had one. Yeah. How many? Uh, uh, and then and and then rings. It's I think it's uh, by the time he's twenty seven. Sorry, no, no, no. 
How many finals MVP? Zero. How many rings? Zero. LeBron at, 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 at Kawhi's age. And yeah. Michael Jordan, he had one. Uh, he had zero rings, and he had. Uh, I think he had no. Sorry, he had one ring, and two, uh, and he had finals MVP once as well. Yeah. So at at these ages, it's a little bit different. Kawhi Leonard's going out here. He has two and two. Yeah, he's, he's going, still in the game. He's bro. going. He's going in. So don't leave and go play with the guy to go and denigrate on your career because yeah. yeah. he sees you as a viable threat. And he's like, oh, I can control the narrative by just playing with him. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you're ter- talking about terms of legacy and all time argument, you kind of got to make a name for yourself on your own. Yeah, exactly. Good point. I think if he goes to LA, he works for someone else's legacy. If he stays in Toronto, he works for his own legacy, which would be unmatched. And he can actually crush all the other guys' legacies if he stays here. Here's the hoping he does. 